Hello and welcome to the Tinner Oral History Project. My name is Anita Aronoff and I welcome Alan Asher to be interviewed for this program. The date is December 2nd, 2019 and we are both participating in the recording of this archive at Temple Israel. The interviewee, Alan Asher, has agreed to, to and signed the interviewer and interviewee release dated March 1st, 2019. With these formalities completed, let's begin the interview. Hi, Alan. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you, Anita. Thanks for coming. So um, we're going to start with some really basic questions first. How old are you? 89. I'll be 90 in February. And uh, where were you born? New York City. Don't remember a thing about it. Don't remember. When did you move into Westchester? 1930. My father rented for a year and then bought a house in the, the woods section of Larchmont in 1931. Mm -hmm. when I was one year old. Uh huh. Did you have siblings? I have an older sister. She passed away at uh, 94, about two months ago, yeah. and uh, she was my big sister. Oh. I'm sorry on your loss. Thank you. Um, so um, you're still living in that same house, aren't you? Well, the house that my father moved into in 1931. Uh -huh. it, I moved out for a while. Uh, that's another story. Uh, I moved back when I remarried in 1976. Uh -huh. Yeah, I love that story. That you're you're living in the house that pretty much you were raised in, right? I was. Um, did you have a nickname? Well. When I was growing up, my friends gave me the nickname Double A, and that sort of phased out as I got older. But as a kid, I was called Double A. And what did that? Any? What did it stand for? What was my it? first initial of my first name. Okay. And the first initial of my second name. Okay, so Double A. I thought it was like maybe something to do with baseball or something. <laughs> Really. <laughs> um, and so, um, how would you describe yourself as a child? Were you happy? I was happy as a comparatively happy. I don't know how to compare it with anybody else, but I was I was fortunate growing up in Westchester. Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, Went to a school that was three or four blocks away. Is that the my Murray Elementary? Right. Is, was it Murray? Murray Avenue School. It was there. Uh -huh. Then the Marnock High School. Uh huh. And then I went to college at Syracuse University. And uh, from there I went in the service. Right, right. Uh, I went in the Navy for four years. Because the Korean War was boiling at that point. It started in 1950. In 1951, I was going to be drafted. So I loved the water. So I enlisted in the Navy so what were for four you, years. Mm -hmm. And were you state, what, what, what were your responsibilities in, in the Navy? Well, I had very interesting experiences. Went to basic training in Bainbridge, Maryland. Then I went to school at Newport, Rhode Island. It was the middle of winter when I was there, so it was not a seasonal time to be in Newport. But from there I was on a ship, a hydrographic survey ship, the USS Tanner, for a year and a half. And it was hydrographic survey uh, ship that went north in the uh, in the in 
north in the summertime when the ice broke up mm -hmm. and we charted the waters for the, the ships to underground cables. Oh, okay. Uh, so, and that, uh, I did two trips south and one trip north, and then I managed to get off the ship, and I had shore duty, and there was two, three different assignments, actually. I was at uh, Chicopee Falls, Massachusetts, attached to the Air Force, Westover Air Force Base, mm -hmm. and then I was there for about nine months, and then they sent me down to um, Fort Dix area, McGuire Air Force Base. Right. And I was there for a year and a half. What year was what? What years was this, Alan? good stead to I worked with a lieutenant junior grade up in Chicopee Falls Massachusetts at Westover and we began sent from McGuire Air Force Base to Dover when they were just building up Dover as a Air Force Base mm -hmm. and, uh, So you were in the Navy but you were liaisoned with, into the with Air the Military mm -hmm. Air Transport Service. Right, interesting. Was, uh, I, uh, uh, and then uh, five years to the day four years to the day, rather, I was discharged, and I went to work, and went to graduate school for uh, three more years, actually four years. Where'd you go to graduate school? New York University. NYU? NYU uh -huh. Business School. Mm -hmm. And what did you study? I studied uh, general business. Okay general business practices. Was that the campus that was in the Bronx at that point, or was no, that the one? Uh, Trinity Place in Manhattan. Okay, okay. And, uh, there was very good teachers there. The instructors are, were famous. Of course, yeah. Was, and then I went into the business, the shaving brush business. And that's your fa that's your grand My grandfather started the business in eighteen eighty eight and I stayed with it until I saw that it was there was no future working there anymore. So your grand your grandfather came from where? Germany. He, he came from Germany. Where in where in Germany was he? Dinkelspiel. Dinkelspiel. Is that is that where is that? Is that northern, southern? I think it's central, southern. I've never been there. <coughs> You've never been to Germany, or I've never been to Germany. Mm -hmm. So he came over here. Okay. Came over in eighteen eighty one. What was his started a business in Boston? Okay. And then did he have family here? Or did he? No, he didn't have family here. He started the move to. What was his name? Leopold. Leopold. Asher. Okay. 
and he started the, the business in New York City. So he came to Boston first, right. and then he moved to New York City. In 1888. And started his own, but I mean, was that something that his fa that your family had? I mean, it, it was or was he? There was a we were allied to the brush business in Germany. Uh huh. Okay. We made brushes there, artist brushes, and shaving brushes. Okay. But uh, we really dropped the artist brushes in the turn of the twentieth century. Uh huh. The business lasted close to a hundred years. Yeah, that's incredible. Tell me a little bit more about that. So you, so he came to New York, and where where did he open up the business? I, there were three or four different locations. Mm -hmm. I think the first one was in Brooklyn. Okay. And then he gravitated towards the lower part of Manhattan, mm -hmm. which was. Uh, it was Maiden Lane, he had a location, then 6th Avenue, 15th Street. And that's where the manufacturing also happened? That's where the manufacturing took place. Uh huh. And then he would sell it to? Darius uh, wholesalers. Uh huh. We did make uh, artist brushes. Uh, and paint brushes, but only for a few years at each point. Uh, I should have brought a few catalogs that, from the That's turn of the century area. Oh, that'd be nice to see, yeah. But I didn't think of that. So, so Leopold, um, when does he settle down and meet your grandmother? They met in Germany. They met in Germany. So both of them came over together. Both of them came okay. over together. What's your grandmother's name? Julia. Julia, okay. Okay. So they both, they met over in Germany. Do you know any stories from them in terms of what their life was like in Germany? Why they felt they needed to immigrate to America? Well, they heard things uh, about America, where you had more freedom, and uh, it, was, it was a big move of so many people started in the mid 19th century, mm -hmm. and uh, they followed the wave, expand the business out of Europe, and settled uh, in the United States. And uh, uh, my father uh, went in the business when he was uh, around 1920. Okay. That's when he was uh, 23 years old. Where did he? Where uh, did he grow up in the city, or was he? He, they grew, he grew up in Mount Ver in Yonkers. Okay. Yonkers. He graduated from Yonkers High School. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have the yearbook from that he's in, in 1915. 1915. He graduated out of Yonkers. Yonkers High School. What is what is your father's name? Lawrence. Lawrence. Okay. And Sarah. Their names, Julia and Leopold. Names are on this windows of the sanctuary. Yes. Uh, Leopold, Julia Asher, and Sarah was my mother. Uh -huh. Her name's up there too. Uh -huh. uh, Lovely. Um, now, do you have um, uncles or did your father, did, was it a, you know, did Leopold and Julia have a large family? They had a my father had a brother named Sidney. He uh, was drafted in World War One. He was about well, five, six years older than my father, and he served in Europe. Mm -hmm. And he came back and went in the business. And then, unfortunately, 
he had a boat and he drowned off the boat in the Hudson River. Oh, wow. So the, that was a tragedy that took years for my grandmother to recover from. How old was he when he had the accident? Uh, he must have been about 30. Oh. Uh, it was, uh, I think, in 1924. It was about 28 or 30. So that's where the mausoleum is, out in Mount Carmel Cemetery. Okay. In Queens. And, uh, but every, things kept moving along. We had my sister and I, and we went to c college and my sister went to Smith. She had the brains in the family. <laughs> <laughs> my, the teachers, some of them, had both of us. They'd say to me, how c come you're not like your sister? <laughs> Made me feel wonderful. <laughs> and, uh, but we had a good life. The business was good until shaving brushes had all that competition from brushes, shaving creams, uh -huh. Burma shave, which you may remember, electric shavers, uh -huh. beards, the latest is the beards. Right, right. Mitchell doesn't have a problem with that. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, now, the business was quite large at one point, right? I remember. Well, the business maximum had 125 employees. Mm -hmm. And as conditions changed, the number of employees dwindled. We had three floors humming of a loft at one time, especially during World War II. We couldn't build brushes fast enough because uh, the army used the brushes for their toilet kit and the, they were told use your shaving brush to clean your rifle. Oh, okay. And that, that was the way uh, the business boomed during the war. And uh, it worked for us. Interesting, very and, interesting. Uh, it carried on into the into the uh, Vietnam War. We were sending brushes to. Uh, so you're supplying the, the through military. the military with the brushes. There's a story I know that you shared once that Henry Kissinger. That was. That's another angle. Uh, my father was had a business and he could offer relatives to come over from Germany in the late 30s. So he brought over many families that were related to us. To get out of... To get out of Germany right. before the war broke out. Right. And uh, Henry Kissinger's family made it out in 1938 right before the war broke out, otherwise they would have been taken to the concentration camps. How, how, how many uh, family members do you think your dad was able 65. to? Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Families were brought over. That's wonderful, that's amazing. He, he put the money up for each one, uh, and it was significant, but we could do it. That's truly amazing. Um, uh, do you um, do you know at this point with the sixty five families? Do you do you know how everyone fared out? Not everyone at all. They've moved into their own sphere of mm -hmm. life, and many of them we don't even hear from. Mm -hmm. I remember names, but that's as far as it goes. So you were how old at, at this point? 
I was eight years old. I was going, right, eight years, yeah. 1938. Were you aware of what your dad was doing? I was aware. Uh huh. I was aware, but I was a kid. I was what a wonderful example, though. That's an amazing. And I know there's some more po portions of that story about Henry Kissinger, right? Because, go ahead, I think. Did he come and work at the. He, when he arrived here, he was able to go to school on the Upper West Side. Uh, he uh, worked in the factory during the day and went to school at night to learn English. And uh, He worked at your factory, at your dad's at factory. factory. And yeah. I do remember him in the factory. And to tell you some cute stories, my father's partner at the time wanted to fire him because he wasn't a good worker. His mind was on other things, <laughs> schoolwork or something like that. And, uh, but my father persisted, it won't last forever. And uh, when, the, when the war really broke out, Henry enlisted or was drafted, and uh, that's when his career started. Right, in politics, yeah. Uh, in the full circle is, I believe, he, you had him come to Temple Israel, right? Yes, and about seven, eight years ago. Uh-huh. I he came persevered, mm -hmm. telling him to come talk to us. and. Uh, had him to dinner at our club, and then uh, he came over here. We was about forty-five minutes late, and everybody was anxious. <laughs> and uh, but his speech he's given so many times. He worked for eleven dollars and fifty cents a week at the brush factory. Is that what that was the that was the a go going rage at the time? Eleven dollars and fifty cents a week. A week. Mm -hmm. And he made a point of it. <laughs> <laughs> but he was gracious. Uh, and, uh, he uh, I haven't seen him since. I, I I don't call him anymore. I could speak to the secretary, but I don't hear my phone ringing with. Henry on the other Henry's end. Henry's not calling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's understandable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the last time I saw him on film was at the uh, McLean funeral. Uh-huh, yeah. That, uh, a year or two ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my life was, I was lucky. Everything seemed to work out well. Yeah, um, and I guess um, it sounds like your dad, was your dad at that point a member of Temple Israel? My dad joined Temple Israel because of the Rochelle because there was no Reformed Temple in Larchmont. Mm -hmm. That temple started about oh, f 10 years after we joined Temple Israel of New Rochelle. Uh, Dad uh, would have joined Larchmont Temple, but we started where we are and we're mm -hmm. still here. Mm -hmm. Glad to be here. Well, we're glad and, you're and standing. a member. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and so when was, so your dad, when, do you know when he joined Temple Israel, the family joined? About 1935. Mm -hmm. My sister was at this temple too. Mm -hmm. and I think she went through the, the curriculum here and graduated. Uh, I think she was confirmed. Mm -hmm. She came back when she was well for some of the High Holy Days services. Okay. And you actually went through, um, I think you didn't get bar mitzvah though, if no, I recall. No, I, I, backed off mm -hmm. being bar mitzvah, but I was confirmed. Right, right. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I'm, 
sorry in a way, but then again, that's the way life. It's a cookie crumbles. Oh, you're, you're, you've been uh, rewarding the temple with uh, your. Uh, you you were on the board. You have, you've been actively involved since. Um, really, you came back. I came back as an adult on your own right and became a member when, here. When my children were of temple age, mm -hmm. they went through the school too. Mm -hmm. And uh, none of them live in near a shell anymore. Right, right. And you have three children, right? I have three children, Kate, Jimmy, and Gail. And they went to colleges did well. Um, and um, I know that, uh, you know, you were here, I guess that was when um, Rabbi Shankman was here. I got here the same year Rabbi Shankman did, in 1937, 38, the end of 37. It, uh, and he was a wonderful rabbi. Everybody loved him, and uh, he was here for, for many years. And were your parents involved with the temple like you? My father was not involved with the temple as much as I've been. He, uh, I don't think he served as a, as assistant treasury capacity, but he did serve down at the United Home in New Rochelle, which he was closely affiliated with, too. Uh, United, it's called United Hebrew today. Yes, yes. But it was called United Home for Aged Hebrews. And every Sunday morning, he would go down there, sometimes with me, and work on the papers and the books at the United Home for Aged Hebrews because he put a, a great aunt in the United Home and she stayed there until she passed away in the 1940s. Mm -hmm. And was your mom involved in, in any in activities in the community? I mean, it sounds like your family through bringing families over from Germany and being involved at the temple and, and My also... My mom was more of a housekeeper, mm -hmm. homemaker. Uh, she did some things at the temple, but not extensively, mm -hmm. as I recall. She wouldn't be up here like my father was at the United Home. Right, right. But a lot of Dad's friends served here and were active here. I mean, the Astro family were close friends. The Englander family mm -hmm. were close friends. Uh, Trop family were close friends. And to this day, I'm friendly with a couple of them. Right, the families that, the family. and those are names that I recognize from right. reading some of the archive. Uh, that they were very involved here. Shimkin yes. mm -hmm. family was active mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was a, a gang, <laughs> a gang of friends. Nice. A large lot. Very nice. Well, at that t at, during your time also, there used to be a lot of um, dances held here for the community, right? Uh, uh, but, oh, there were groups that uh, we attended. Uh, for teens, mm -hmm. young marrieds, uh, there was a couple named Sam and Miriam Schmuckler. They were teachers here, and they were they were my teachers in religious school. Mm -hmm. Wonderful people. Nice. Wonderful families. I I got a lot out of going to Temple Israel. Uh, <clears throat> I met my first wife basically here through other friends that were here. So I know Elaine, so your first wife, uh, you were married um, 
1956. And that's who you had your three children with? That's who I had three children with. Mm -hmm. And uh, 1956, the first wife, and the second wife, 1976. And that's Elaine, who oh, I know Elaine. dearly. And uh, 20 years of separation. It's, uh, was, it's a very wonderful experience. I'm glad to be able to work with the temple. It's it's, we hope it continues for another hundred years. Yes, yes, we all, we all do. We all look for it to continue, absolutely. And Rabbi Wall married Elaine and I in 1976, and uh, we were born in the same year. We were only three months apart in ages. So we, as so long as he was here, we, we were close, and he bar mitzvahed my son. He was my son Jimmy's was the first bar mitzvah that Rabbi Wall had here, and it was awkward. We were in the middle of a divorce uh, that wasn't too easy. Right. So uh, there were two parties mm -hmm. afterwards, and we were married in Rabbi Wall's office across the hall. So you and Elaine were married? In, in that office. In that office by Rabbi Wall. Rabbi Wall. Uh -huh. On Leap Day, 1976. So does that, does that mean you only celebrate your anniversary every four years? Technically, <laughs> I don't get away with it. <laughs> That's, that's pretty much my story, and I'm going to be carried out of my house that I grew up in, <laughs> made a pledge, uh -huh. and uh, I don't know who's going to officiate yet, <laughs> but uh, we'll be here. So, um, what, are, what are your fondest moments uh, or memories of... of at Temple Israel. My fondest memories of Temple Israel when I was maybe nine or ten years old, which is famous, is I was not alone. We during the war we had a substitute rabbi when Rabbi Shankman was in the service. Mm -hmm. And we used to have a in Webster Avenue there used to be classrooms at the lower level, basement level. In the uh, in the class, in the building, so we didn't much care for the rabbi substitute rabbi. His English was broken. He was German, and it was pretty bad. So many of us would duck out the window during the services. Uh, it's a known fact. Uh, and I was not alone. <laughs> we go down at Glenwood Lake, <laughs> catch frogs. <laughs> uh, so I was a bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> so t t I, I suspect uh, did somehow that must have stopped. <laughs> it did got stop. <laughs> it did stop. Uh, no question about mm. it. We graduated. You graduated. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, we were kids. Everybody had that. that so, those ideas. Yeah, I hear a lot of these stories about Temple Israel and getting and the kids, and kids uh, hiding. <laughs> hiding, exactly, exactly. Yeah, no, nothing changes, mm. basically. Yeah. But we're, I'm glad that uh, we're doing okay. I hope we'll do better with what's coming up for the future. Yes, we all do, we all do, yes. Yeah. Having Anita here is a big plus. Can I put that uh, plug in? It will have to be edited, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> but thank you, Alan. Thank you very much. Have, have, we, have we touched upon everything? Is there anything else? Have we missed anything? You're the interviewer. So, um, 
I think, um, well, it's now you know my life, Mitchell. Well, and I know his big commitment to Israel, and he's been involved in a lot of pro Israel activities. Yes, he yes, absolutely. I have an apology, I guess, uh, to Israel. My wife and I, and my first wife and I, we never took a trip to Israel. My wife today would not be able to do it. And I don't think I would do it either. And it was there, um, uh, is it a fear, was there fear of flying? Well, flying or? was not you know, something we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. We did fly a couple of times when my daughter got married um, in Wales. Oh, okay. With my older daughter. And that was an experience. We did it. That was important. But we, we don't like travel as much. I did it in the Navy on a ship. <laughs> Took one cruise since then. Uh huh. It was a lane. Right. And that was it. Okay. Okay. So. Not for us. Been very supportive, though you know. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. very supportive of Israel and bringing in speakers here. You started the um, the Asher Speaker Fund. Um, I still, I had help getting the speakers, mm -hmm. and I don't have that help today. Uh, but uh, it's been a good ride. If you want speakers, I'll tell you where you can find them. <laughs> well, um, maybe we can um, help you um, bring in more speakers as part of the Israeli Action Committee. You know? mm -hmm. My contact uh, is sort of wavered, uh, but I'm still in touch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I needed that, that boost. And what was it about the, what What was your um, um, passion behind, you know, funding the speaker series here? Well, uh, broadening the, the reform movement for the temple, mm -hmm. uh, contacting speakers from Israel, Mm -hmm. In fact, this rabbi uh, that we had about nine months or a year ago, uh, he's going to be in town coming uh, next week. And uh, he's a friend of Rabbi Wiener's from back in school days. So we're going to have dinner together and see him. His name is Gabby Dagan. Oh, yes, yes, Gabby Dagan. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. we help the uh, Leo Beck Education Center mm -hmm. in Israel, too. So, that's our contact. Right, and, and, and actually. He's the chief rabbi there. You actually, um, I know you also uh, support other communities. You're involved in other nonprofit organizations yourself, you and Elaine. Um, I know that you, yeah. you support a lot of... Quite a few. Right. And uh, all good causes. There's a million and one good causes mm -hmm. out there. Yeah, there is. Yep. Uh, but we can't do it alone. No. No. That's, that's the thing. Glad to help Temple Israel. My Eighty years of Temple Israel. <laughs> the roots are deep. Yes, they are. They are and strong. Well, thank you very much, Alan. You're welcome. I Pleasure appreciate. Is mine. Thank you and so much for everything that you do. It's, uh, it's no, my it's honor to interview you today. Mine, as well. Hmm.